Hello and welcome to Archaeology for the Soul. Today we have with us a powerhouse, my beautiful friend, Medea Bavarella Chetnik. She is the bestseller author of Facing Grief with Eyes Wide Open, a gem of wisdom that she shares with the world through her own experience and her studies in Buddhism, meditation, shamanism, Gather spirituality and Christian mysticism. She is a feminine power coach. She is also a psychotherapist in practice for almost 20 years in Toronto. She is a relationship coach and she is facilitating seminars and workshops in creating conscious relationships. Welcome, Medea, and I'm so happy to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you, Karina. It's so lovely to be here. I'm so excited about us. I need to say yeah. that you are also the Evolve TV host. And that you, what I know you uh, about and for, is that you always talk about being co-creators. That's what attracted me to you when I met you some mm -hmm. years ago. Yes. And, and I said, okay, she talks about co-creation, co-creation so much. I need to know about this one day, right? More about this. But then we became friends and, and I know you as a poet, as a writer, and now your beautiful book came out and I'm so happy to have you with us today. Thank you. And I'm so happy to be here doing this with you. <laughs> so um, let me ask you a few questions from the book because I love yes. what you are uh, writing about. You are telling us that... Um, Paradoxical, you had your own personal renaissance through a catastrophic and tragic life experience. Would you mind telling us a little more about that experience? Yeah, yes, of course, of course. Um, now, I, I, I already was on the path of evolution on the path of you know development personal development and transformation actually I feel like I've been all my life in a way you know I mm -hmm. have and then consciously um, in the last I don't know 35 40 years like since for a long long time of my life I've been in 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 search for the transcendent for finding myself finding because I sensed inside of myself since I was a child that there were these there was something inside of me that I needed that I was born that I need to share with the world and that catastrophic experience uh, seven years ago that ha happened seven years ago was what I call it's like it was the it propelled me it was an acceleration uh, in my own develop in my own uh, birthing another way of saying and also becoming more consciously a co-creator. And you know, the, the, um, the event that happened was the death of my son, my only son, oh. uh, Nathaniel. He was 24 years old mm -hmm. and um, it was a very intense, intense experience uh, losing my son. <laughs> he was the center of my universe, of course. Um, I, ha I had been a single parent and raised him on my own. And so when he passed, it was, I felt like I was just, I, I don't know at the beginning, I, I, I wasn't even aware. It was so, um, the shock was so severe and that I wasn't even, it, it kind of threw me, it, it, what happened, it, it, it provided a, a shock to my system mm -hmm. and including to my own sense of self, to my own sense of how I related to myself, to others, to the world. There was a temporary that I think it lasts around six months at the beginning. The grief process lasts about ten, you know, for about three years intensely. But then I navigated it, what I, what I write in the book, consciously. The first six months, it was the, the shock. And it was like, I, you know, I, I was so, t it was in a way, it was disoriented because it, re it, it created um, a, re um, a space or, or a gap between who I, you know, my own sense of self, how I had known myself up to that moment, 
And then there was that space where it was like, I was just not sure for a while what was going on. I was just in this like, ah. Then I was able to eventually, um, after six months, I, I realized that I needed to make a conscious intention because I realized when I was projecting my consciousness into the future, I felt like I couldn't see my future. It felt like there was a wall. And that was a little bit like, like I really, I really saw that and I go, oh my God, what does that mean? And then I realized that what it meant to me, it was that like my future did not exist. So there was, it was like this blank canvas. So you, you couldn't picture yourself without being, without your son or without well, it, it, but, 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 uh, Karina, I, could, I didn't, as, uh, I couldn't picture myself in anything. It's like I tried to sense into the future in my meditation and I wasn't seeing anything. It was like I was just seeing a blank canvas. So then I realized that what it meant for me meant that I needed to then choose, make a conscious choice of what I wanted to, you know, what I wanted to co-create. Because one of the possibilities was that I was not going to continue living because that was a possibility definitely because the intensity of the pain was so intense, was so deep that it was like, oh my God, I felt, I felt like I was dying. And in a way, I was dying. It was a metaphorical death. It was an emotional, psychological, and even spiritual death because what, it, what I mean by that, it was that everything that I, I knew was not necessarily uh, solid anymore, was not necessarily my, so there was this like, oh, I could create whatever I wanted. You know, and so what the first thing I need to do is I need to make, I made a conscious choice that I was going to live because I sensed deeper than even the grief that I had, that there was a, a purpose. You know, in fact, the first night when my son passed away, you know, it was four o'clock in the morning driving back from the hospital um, in a taxi with my best friend. Then I, I just said, okay, God, if I was talking to God, to the universe, <laughs> to the great creative, you know, essence is saying, okay, if this had to happen, if it was my son's destiny and my destiny, even though right now I have no clue how it's going to unfold, I, I know, I sense that I could accept it eventually mm -hmm. if I discover, if I know what the higher purpose is. Mm. So immediately... I elevated this tragedy into the spiritual level, like seeing that if I put this into, this into the larger context, into the bigger picture of my life and mm -hmm. my life, then perhaps I can discover the higher meaning and then that higher meaning can help me accept it eventually. So it sounds like uh, Victor Frankl in his book, they talks that we have to give kind of meaning for the suffering. Yes, to be able to be with it. So if someone... Well, well, it, yeah, the, 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 sorry, the, the, the suffering meaning like, what is the higher meaning in, meaning, the, story the, of my, in, yeah. in the story of my life? And the you're life saying, story. Yeah, you're saying that you were on this spiritual path, path for almost all your life, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if somebody is not on this path, on the spiritual path, conscious, we are all on a spiritual path, but consciously making an effort to to heal and evolve. Yes. If somebody hasn't been uh, in, in connection with the spiritual side, how can somebody find a, a way to, to overcome loss and grief? What can people do with, so, so they can avoid um, having suicidal thoughts, so, so they can find a path to, to healing if they have not attempted to um, be on this conscious spiritual path yet? Well, it, you know, it, it's a very interesting question, uh, Karina, because what I experienced was that there was that temporary, that lasts about six months, uh, there was a temporary suspension, suspension of my own sense of self. Mm -hmm. And in that, then I was able to, I was able to go deeper you know, to go deeper inside of myself. So in that, it was almost like my, you know, I was just guided my own in, by my own instincts. Mm -hmm. so at the beginning, you know, my expertise as a therapist, 
cool. uh, my expertise as a facilitator and I, all the things that I'd been doing for, you know, 20 years prior to that experience. Like, like I wasn't thinking, oh yeah, let me apply this. <laughs> you know, yeah. was, no, it was just like instinctual, but because I, I guess I, 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 I sensed, I just connected with my, with that instinct, with my own soul guiding me. And I knew that I needed to surrender because it was either dying mm -hmm. or surrendering or, or, you know, and I chose surrendering. But at that point, looking back, I wasn't even conscious of doing that. It just happened to me because I sensed into something higher that was going on. So I surrendered into this process of grief, which was so intense for me because I experienced it also on a physical level. I was experiencing this grief, this attacks. So I could only just like breathe, you know, and, and, and just like kind of like saying, okay. And then I had at the beginning, I had some, you know, some powerful uh, friends who were also healers and, and, and uh, powerful healers who were just helping me by not, you know, it wasn't like that they were guiding me in some kind of process or anything like that. They were just their presence you know, holding my hand because I felt like I need to have somebody holding my Absolutely. hand I'm still here on, on this earth, you know? And so, so I guess it's like, it's like wanting to, because, so for people who don't already have this, it's like, there is a possibility of, 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 of navigating this intense grief of loss, which I mean, loss is not just about loss of a, of a you know, it, it's such a big umbrella uh, yeah. word, word and, and loss incorporates, includes all kinds of losses, like including a job or, or, or you know, all kinds of loss. This, for me, was the extreme. Well, this is the, the ultimate loss. loss. The ultimate, exactly. Yeah. Because then once I do the ultimate, after I remember thinking, oh my God, you know, like I haven't done this, I can do anything <laughs> because this is the most difficult, the most challenging thing that I've ever had to do in my life. It took so much. Perfect. So... I would, I would encourage the people, like I would say, to, to get help. Because if somebody doesn't, is not aware, and in, in, there have been a lot of accounts of people outside of even the spiritual realm of, or, or the, you know, the personal development, the self-realization realm, there have been a lot of accounts throughout history of people that have transcended, that have become enlightened, that have discovered the divine through a very catastrophic experience. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's like the St. John, uh, you mm -hmm. know, John of the Cross wrote about this in the book, The, the Dark Night of the Soul. You know, uh, Dante Alighieri co talked about it in the Inferno, you know, in his, you know, is that, that sometimes our own rebirth, our own opening, our own awakening happens after a strong, intense experience. Because what that strong, intense experience does, it, it, it changes everything that we know. So it creates yeah. like a, that blank canvas <clears throat> that then we can then we can move into the realm, the, the deeper realm, what I call it, the realm of the divine, the realm of the truth, the realm mm -hmm. of the soul, the realm of what is really here other than our ego understanding or our conceptual understanding of who we are, what life is, what others are. Then we have, a set, we have the possibility of accessing mm -hmm. what is already, what is, it's, it's eternal, what it's been here all along that perhaps our own conditioning was preventing us from seeing. So mm -hmm. in that moment of, of trauma, the conditioning also goes away. So they were like, we're left with this openness. So it, it, you're stripped of everything you know. Yes, everything, exactly. The construction process. Exactly. The, the bare bones. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, and going back under the first question, the Renaissance, then there is that possibility that it's like, the then you were, I felt myself like I, I died to my old sense of self, to my own consciousness, to how I understood life. And even though it was already, you know, I was already, as I said, pretty developed, I would say. And, and, and in that openness, when I just like said, I'm, I'm, I'm surrendering and I want to, I want to understand how to do this. Mm 
and how to navigate this in from the higher perspective mm -hmm. then what happened i think it's like i connected to that truth inside of me i connected mm -hmm. to the light i connected mm -hmm. to the love in my heart because once i was experiencing the grief and I was allowing myself to experience it with meaning, like I wasn't shutting it off. I wasn't running away from it or I wasn't denying it. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't, uh, 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 I wasn't drinking or I wasn't, you know, a lot of people do things to, yes. to mask the pain. I wasn't yes. doing any of that. I was raw. I was saying, okay, bring it on, <laughs> so to speak. And, and, and so what happened that then I, I, I started to experience what was there underneath the grief, beyond the grief. Mm -hmm. And underneath the grief, underneath any mm -hmm. fear, underneath any human suffering, if we're willing to face it, that's why the book is called Facing Grief, because we have to face everything. We have to be willing to look at it and not to allow the fear, the conditioned fear to stop us. So there is this courage to say, okay, I'm willing to look at everything. I'm willing to look at. So then what happens, there is this kind of like surrender. There's like this opening. The mm -hmm. heart opens deeper. And so mm -hmm. then we're able to access what's underneath there, which to me is that grace. It was that love, that compassion for myself first. It was like I was, I was actually grieving and I was also experiencing compassion for myself. So I was experiencing both, you know, the part of me that was starting, you know, the, that was starting the evolving part that was observing the mm -hmm. part of me that was suffering, that mm. was so much pain and distress. And so then I was also the one that was supporting and was guiding and was soothing, mm. embracing myself, literally, because, you know, I did not have a mother. I did not have, you know, uh, family here uh, with me so I do not have any those external you know the mother right mm. so I became my own mother you know oh my god it's so important that we learn how to be our own mother so many of us yes. have this mother wound right with yes. our yes. mothers yes it's so important to learn to heal this wound and it looks like through your experience you learn how to become your own mother and know how to mother Yes. I mean, my, my mother, I, ha I had a, my mother was one of the most incredible mothers. I was so, I was so blessed to have her because she was so totally unconditionally loving, but you know, she wasn't here. So I remember I was, you know, there's, there is an instinctual that I was needing a, a mother, a mother love, a mother support. Absolutely. It's so important. And, and so I, I, I was, I was praying. I was like surrendering and I was actually praying a lot to mother Mary. Mm -hmm. she's one of my guides and I was saying how did you do it how did you do it to the archetype you know to that consciousness yes yes of the archetypal divine mother and I was saying you show me so I was really surrendering to that archetype that energy of the, the energy. Mother, of love yeah, of nurturing yeah. that. Yeah. and so then I awaken it I awaken it within myself because we have these are our superpowers we have inside of ourselves everything that we need so it was interesting that the pain like almost like forced me to have to access ex experiences and 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 qualities and resources out of myself that i hadn't i wouldn't have unless i went through this experience so mm -hmm. that's where the renaissance mm -hmm. happened probably they were dormant inside of you with their yes like you your you didn't access them because you didn't have the need probably you didn't think that of the need to well, yeah, and, and, and this, these are dormant within each human being, right, except right. that there is like something that the trigger that has to push it. Yes. And that was the trigger for me at that, at that deep level. And that could be, you know, traditionally has been a trigger, as I said before, the dark night of the soul that, that could happen with anyone. And then, so that's when I, as I started to then discovering the southern force, the southern power from inside of me, there was the power of love, the power of nurturing, the power of acceptance, mm -hmm. of, of the power of compassion and empathy. Then I started to, wow, experiencing this like incredible. Then I started understanding that this was a force. It was, this was living inside of me. So I started focusing on it. I start bringing it. I start connecting with it in my meditations. You know, mm -hmm. I would grieve, I would cry, I would go. And then, you know, in my meditation, I would say, okay, 
I'm, you know, I'm calling on my, you know, on this love and help me and, and, and guide me and, you know, guide me. And so that's where like, and then I start, you know, the poetry start coming and all this incredible, I felt so much, I unleashed my own creative, so, uh, my own creativity, my own, you know, my own great, you know. You I kind of found, found your voice through that. Experience. Yes, yes. Found your voice. Yes, yes. My you know, truth. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And it's so beautiful how you, I, I want to make a point. You mentioned that you didn't want to mask the pain. You didn't want to go to take uh, medicines, to take uh, medication to numb the pain. And um, so it is possible to transform this pain that, it we is. go through without masking it, without going to uh, depression medication or anxiety medication. And so many, like 50% of the population is on some type of medication for the very reason is to, to numb the pain, whatever pain or suffering we think we cannot um, live with, right? But so beautifully, you, you learned how to transform this pain through calling on to the um, Divine Mother and... and all these aspects that we have inside. We don't need to go to outside uh, pharmaceuticals. Absolutely not. And, and as, I, as I was calling outside of me, you know, because there's, there's a, a meditation that I used to do that was very powerful where I, you know, when I visualize my higher essential self, and then I, I sense the qualities and then I bring them in. So in this way, it was just very organically, very in, instinctively, I would like, I'm, I'm lost. And so I'm calling from the love, you know, divine mother help me. But what, and then realizing that what I was calling it, as I was calling outside of myself, I was actually awakening it from inside of me. Yeah. <laughs> because it is inside of me. And so I want to say that we all have this. We all have this inside. This is, this is one way of doing it. It's more challenging to do it, you know, if you don't have the skills, if you don't have the awareness, but there is help. It's, it's, you know, there, there is, and, and I would say that the first important step is to really, um, it's really awaken and, 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 um, and cultivate and bring into em emergence this, the compassion be towards ourselves when we're grieving, when we're, when we're in pain, because then if we look at ourselves and instead of judging, because that is the conditioned human is to judge. Mm -hmm. Judgment, it, it actually stops us mm -hmm. from, our, judgment is, and, and fear, they're very similar, you know, because underneath the, the judgment there is fear, and the fear is of the unknown. So instead of choosing fear, well, we don't know, let's choose trust in the sense of like, I have no idea what it's going to look like, but I want to trust because what I'm sensing inside of myself is that I want to heal myself or I want to take care of myself. I want to, I want to evolve. I want to emerge into what it is in the experience of what is there? What else is there other than this? So that's where it's the beginning of becoming co-creators because mm -hmm. we, you know, as I was supporting myself and I was naturally having compassion for myself and even compassion for other people involved. For example, my ex-husband, you know, my son's father, I was just like, I felt so deep compassion for him, even though we had already been separated for a long time and he was living in the States and, you know, we hadn't seen each other, but it was like, because it was like, I, I access, I access that compassion and empathy. Mm -hmm. And so then that, because I was able then to turn it towards myself from inside of myself and then start sensing and, 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 and even in my own mind saying, you know, that there is goodness in the world, that there is love in the world, even though right now I'm feeling all this pain, but I know there is. So I want to start calling for it. <laughs> I want to align myself to that. And it worked because I was calling it in. Mm -hmm. I was calling it in and I was awakening it. And so then I was, you know, I was aligning myself to mm -hmm. the goodness of life. Oh. That there is that, that that life is good, that that there is such a thing as love, that there is a thing as divinity. Because at first it was like, oh, yeah. but but then I experienced it. So this is you know I I'm a feminine power coach, and I work a lot with the three three feminine power uh, centers. Power center one, which is the, transforming the relationship with ourselves, 
power center too, which is, you know, the, the, the transforming, you know, realizing our own destiny, which is our relationship with life, with the essence of life, um, with, with a higher, uh, you know, with a higher purpose of life. And then power base three, which is, you know, how do we realize, you know, how do we, you know, our, our relationship with others. So it, it, it's like, I real, looking back, I realized that I was doing that, but very organically. So as I started to really support myself and I started having compassion and embrace myself because there wasn't anyone else outside of myself. And I sensed that I needed that. So I gave it to myself as best as I could. So I was starting to transform. I was starting that relationship with myself between the conscious part of me and between the, the, the pain. Because it wasn't just the pain of the grief that I was also experiencing. It was like the first six months, Karina, it was like my whole life. Yeah. You mentioned how you were observing your pain. And I'm, I'm picturing the, the, the observer and the, the observed. So in the same time, you, you are the observer. You look from outside in. And then you're also the observed. So, yes. so it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's, um, it's a detachment somehow because you have to detach to be ob to observe. But in the same time, you are attached because you can't, this is real. This pain is real. You cannot detach from it. So how do you? So, so, so it's, it's like detaching from, from the pain. It's not really detaching. It's kind of like, it's kind of like being aware of the pain and then mm -hmm. realizing what am I going to do? How am I going to relate to this pain? Mm -hmm. So how am I going to respond to it? So we have options. And, and with, with pain of grief, it's not just with pain of grief, it's with whatever breakdown, whatever conflict also mm -hmm. we experience, whatever, um, uh, you know, whatever conflict, whatever issue, whatever we are experiencing is like, is it's not because this is the con human condition. We're always going to have this human suffering in one way or another. And the purpose of us being here it's to discover who we are other than the suffering and then also elevate mm -hmm. and evolve ourselves to the point where we are the ones who are handling, we are transforming our own pain because mm -hmm. then that part of us that is evolving to transform our own pain is the part of us that it is our true essence. Mm -hmm. So we are actually have an opportunity to develop our true essence and identify ourselves with that, become that through the pain. We can do that. So because it, it, as we respond to the pain, we identify with this part of me, which is like, oh, it's like this is, I, I want to love myself. I want to have compassion for myself as I'm going to pain rather than putting, you know, rather than judging or rather than running away. Mm -hmm. Because as I was doing it, I also was experiencing that that's how I was becoming more free. You, you also mentioned somewhere in the book uh, that you had to deal with your own guilt. Yes. And yeah. guilt in this particular uh, event in your life. But so many of us, so many people are so attached to guilt. And um, I, I believe our Judeo-Christian uh, culture, it's, it's, it's bringing guilt over and over yes. to us that we are guilty and we have to suffer to be observed of this guilt can you talk a little bit about yes. guilt and how to um, find a more um, liberated uh, perspective liberate perspective on this issue of guilt well i consider guilt the experience of guilt just like the experience of fear or the experience of any other limiting emotions that are really um that they're really an expression of our own conditioning. They're not really a reflection of who we are in truth, who we are in our own essence. Because who we are in truth in our own essence, we're already whole. We're already perfect. Because we, at that level, we are a reflection of the divine. Mm -hmm. Like we were saying before, we have everything inside of us. We just don't know. And we haven't experienced it. But now there is this opportunity because we are evolving. We are evolving not only myself or you, we're all evolving collectively. The whole, you know, the whole planet is evolving. 
earth itself is evolving. So we're changing and we're evolving very rapidly. So, so it's evolving is really about discovering um, who we are, the truth of who we are as, as you know, that, that, that true identity, as opposed to the identity of, of, um, in, in feminine power, we call false center, which is not the truth, but it's what we have learned. It's what we have experienced growing up, especially, mm -hmm. and also the assumptions, you know, the stories that we made ourselves around our own experiences. Because if the assumptions, if the conclusions that we came to uh, derived from our own experiences are not making us happy, they are not making us you know, feeling um, empowered, then that means that they're not the truth. Then that's what it needs to be transformed. So that's how, what, how we know, how something makes us feel. Because when we are evolving, when we are in truth, we don't have any of that. We are, you know, we, and even we relate to breakdown, breakdowns or conflict from this place of compassion. So it's not that we don't ever experience any breakdown, it's just how we relate, how we respond to it is different right so people so, so, as a, so guilt is not a real thing it's part of our conditioning and in my in my personal experience we all have our own personal experience mm -hmm. my own experience it's not just my own personal experience with grief but also because i'm a woman we we as, as women we also collectively carry in our own unconscious this collective guilt that we, that you were saying, because we have been conditioned, you know, mm -hmm. we've been conditioned to be taking care of everybody else, to be these perfect caregivers and all that stuff. And if we're not, then so my guilt was, you know, was was all of that was was you know the mistakes that I made as a single parent, you know, that it was like because I was seeing everything, it was like popping up. It's like ah, oh. so I have to face everything, and now I did it. It was like, I, I, again, like before, I allowed myself to look at everything, to face, to be willing to have that courage to say, I'm going to look at this. I'm really going to see how bad, this, how bad I've been. And when I actually looked at it, everything that would pop up, I would, I would go to the, I would look at it and go to the original intention, mm -hmm. the motivation. Why did I do this? That was a mistake. Then I realized that. I was, then I moved to the place, I went as, to the depth of my own innocence and realizing that everything I did, I did it out of love. You know, maybe they weren't the, the most ideal way of doing it because I did not know any other way. Mm. But the intention was that it was good. And so when I saw that, it was natural for me to embrace myself and to and to have compassion for myself so everything you're telling me so far is part of this uh, conscious grieving that you are talking well, it, it's about. part of the conscious grieving but the conscious grieving that i did it's also part of the process of transformation of and, and then mastering our own transformation which is which is anchored in the work that i've been doing for the last you know 30 years of my life and also the, the work that I've been doing in feminine power, you know, in the last six years, you know, like I'm, I'm a, you know, I'm, I'm going to be a facilitator and uh, leadership, you know, I did a mastery. I did a, a lot of progress with feminine power. So, so look, so it's not just, so what I did personally is backed up or, it, or it is within the larger context of the transformative process yeah. that every human being goes through. So I was teaching it and I, you know, and I facilitated it and I had to do it at this very intense level because it was just because I needed to really propel, really accelerate my own awakening at a soul level. I, I mean, I guess I'm a, I mean, it, it, it almost seems like for all the, all the things you've done before your, your, the loss of your son. Uh, yes. It, it, um, when this event happened, it, it, it kind of, uh, pushed you to um, reevaluate your identity. Yes. Who you are as now you're not a mother. I mean, I'm still, a, am I still a mother? Uh, I mean, for me, I don't know. It wasn't even beyond that. It wasn't even, it started with that. Right? 
Yeah, it was even beyond being a mother. It was just everything that how I knew myself. Like since I, you know, my whole, my whole consciousness, my whole identity. And so, and that's the work of feminine power, the in, in, in power center one. It's like that in order for us to really evolve, we really need to really become aware of what are, what's the content of our consciousness, mm. what we believe, you know, what are our assumptions, what, you know, and, and, and question because if something is not making us feel empowered and is not making us connect with our truth, then that is not, that is false. That is not true. So that the indication that that's what, you know, that needs to be transformed. So, and, and trans, but then we transform it. Like we were saying before, by the, there's a part of us that is the awakening and the more mature and the more, the wiser and the more aware part that then that's the part that we, transforms the, the lower, you know, the more restrictive and limiting, you know, part of our own consciousness. So, for sure, because like, like it, it's, it says that we are spiritual beings in this physical body. The, the spiritual far, part of us understands all this and it's perhaps able to um, overcome all these tragedies we go through, but the physical part, how how we teach that part of us to to be with this um, extraordinary event in our lives that uh, absolutely uh, force us to uh, to define to redefine us to like I, I talk about many times to re, to re-enter our story again and again yes excavate what matters for yes. that for that uh, particular yes. uh, situation we are working on right. So since I bring this to um, to our in our conversation, if I say to you that we are meant to re-enter our stories with each situation that happens to us, we are forced to re-enter our stories and excavate what matters. You as a poet, speak to me in metaphors. Speak to us in metaphors. How do we do that? Speak to our poetic side. How do we do that? How do we re-enter? Um, in this sacred sacred space of our lives and excavate what matters well i i write this in the book as well and what i start in my experience what i start discovering it and it, which was also part of the renaissance which part of what i was starting to move into transform into from the pain was that i started to fall in love with myself mm. yeah. wow and it is such a beautiful, because all my poetry, and you know a lot of my poetry, yeah. you know, then I started writing poet, poetry about connect with my inner beloved. Mm -hmm. Because I was, because this relationship that I, was, that, I was, that I was establishing, that I was, that it was growing, that it was emerging with myself, it started feeling like a love story. Wow. Like, like falling in love and it felt like, oh, there is an aspect of me inside of myself that I start calling it the beloved that I really love because she's so beautiful and wow. she is, wow, she's so amazing. So it's like, so it wasn't just like, oh, I want to, it was like, I have to do this. Mm -hmm. Then it was like, you know, I have to do this. So it's like the coming back into the story, like you call it, which is so beautiful. It's a beautiful metaphor, Karina. It's like my love story with myself, how then I am guiding mm -hmm. myself through this life, through the journey of life. Mm -hmm. And how I'm guiding myself through the journey of life is from a place of honoring myself. Wow. From a place of recognizing my, you know, my beauty, my genius, my truth, my love. And so, so then it becomes like, it becomes like a, um, I, I, you know, and I talk a lot of, about this as well. It becomes like a, no, no, it, it becomes like a, uh, a sacred, a, a sacred life. It becomes, so I relate to myself in a sacred way because I recognize that I am, you know, that, that I'm, that I'm awakening, that I'm touching that sacred inside of me, which of course is within everyone. Mm -hmm. So I'm discovering and so because I'm discovering now and, and, and I've been discovering and I can articulate it and I can work with it and then combine with all the years of training that I have, it becomes a really powerful container 
for you know guiding and supporting others as well because I, I find I you know because then I discovered this is part of my purpose you lived it not only from the books or from the training you have but you lived it exactly so it's become like not just my work right right my work, right. Was my work before but this has become now my my life it becomes my poetry my life becomes poetry. absolutely absolutely and i want to ask you before we have our last questions do you feel that it's possible to um have this to come to this place of self-love and finding ourselves, finding our truth, finding our voice without going through a massive loss. Is there a possibility that we Absolutely. find ourselves without having so much loss and so much pain? Absolutely. I mean, we you know we don't we don't choose our losses. Right. Really, we know? don't. Like I didn't choose my time. It, it, that was you know that was part of my destiny, and I, I and I yes, and I yes. know I know because I've done a lot of also discovery. Of course, it is. It is possible. Absolutely. It is. It, 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 then it becomes like, because we all have, so it's like if I ask anyone to really, you know, like really tune out to the outside world and going inside and access that impulse that wants to emerge, that wants to guide us into some, to discovering what's more, mm -hmm. what's, you know, what's beyond what we know. I think that that is an impulse that we all have. It's the, it's the impulse of evolution that lives within each one of us. And uh, Barbara Max Haber talks a lot about that, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and so if we connect with that impulse, it's the impulse which is really even beyond losses or anything. It's the impulse that we're brought into this, into this world to discover or our purpose to discover what we're here to do what, what what's the whole point of all this is for sure and so if we connect with that impulse and more and more people are connecting with that because they're sensing that there is more to what they are living to what they know to what they have been um identifying with the sense that there's more and so it's that sensing is that desire it's very deep and more almost like a desire at a soul level that it's a collective desire, it's a human desire for wanting to know what's possible for us, to discover our own possibilities. So that could be a motivation, mm -hmm. right? So it doesn't have to be pain because, yeah. you know, that motivation I had it since I was a child for a bit more, right? right. That's why I studied philosophy and all that stuff. So it's either the, so that what the pain does it brings us there, like without us like kicking and screaming, <laughs> without us thinking about it. it like it kind of us there, for you know, kind of like saying, give us a bit of a kick, you know. But if we don't have that, then we we look, we make conscious that desire, that impulse. I want to know more. I want to know why am I here for? Like you know, it's not enough for me to know that I'm this and I'm doing this because I sense that there is more. So that impulse, that desire. Yeah. Is the can be the motivation. To to me, this this you're bringing the idea of curiosity. I, I, I'm such a curious person. I want to yeah. know more. What? Yeah. What's underneath that? Yeah. I, I have a strong sense of. I want to know things. Why things happening a certain way? And you, I think you're talking about the same yeah, thing. Yeah, it, 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 to me, Karina, it's it's even deeper than a curiosity because it's mm -hmm. tapping in to a desire. Uh, a yearning mm -hmm. that is a human yearning that we're born with, that is at a soul level. It's that yearning that we're born with to say, I am here and maybe I am, you know, just living this life, but then I'm sensing that there's so much more and I want to know what that is because, I was, because now I'm becoming aware and conscious of desire, but that desire has always been inside of us all along. Everyone has this. Everyone has this. All of us. All of us. You know, and people express it with their art you know there are many other many ways of doing it right yeah so it, it's it's the human it's that it's a human desire it's a human desire and or, yeah and for sure human uh, suffering is part of our human condition we all experience some type of suffering some type of loss um and you did such a great job redefining suffering for us yeah and, and so that, it, thank you for saying that because that's what i was to say it was like it's like human suffering exists. Yes. 
And now it's like, let's bring the understanding, the conscious understanding that there is a higher purpose to human suffering other than just suffering and feeling pain. That it's through the suffering and the pain that we can also evolve, that we can also, um, you know, we can also empower ourselves. We can re be reborn, <laughs> you know, into a new configuration of ourselves that is more aligned to who we, tr to our truth. Absolutely. And as we go through the pain, we, we're looking for that place of peace inside. So once we lost it because something happened in our lives, then we're going we're gonna to look intensely, how can I regain that? How can I have that place of peace inside? Yeah. So, and, when we make, and when we make that, yes, you know, that's the surrendering. Surrendering like, yeah. I'm going to go through this because I have no other choice, but I want to go through this from a higher understanding, I want to know, is there a purpose to this? I'm going to be suffering. Then we, that's when we, to me, that's when we start becoming co-creators because yeah. we're putting out there into the universe because the universe is intelligent. The universe is really alive. It yeah. listens to us. Like now it's like, I really consciously come, I really co-create with the universe. It's like every time I, you know, I have my own process that I do that I'm also teaching to other people is like, Every time I do this, it works. It works. The universe delivers. The universe gives me because the universe is, it collaborates it collaborates with us, co-creates with us because the universe is good, like I said, and it wants us mm -hmm. to support us in in accessing who we are in truth, who we are at core level, and discovering all the possibilities that are available to us. The universe wants that. I'm oh. I'm finding that. <laughs> Beautiful. Like, I learned so I'm, much from you today, Medea. And, 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 and so I'm discovering that I'm having this love affair with the universe too, or with light. Yeah. You, you are teaching us so much. And um, if anybody wants to connect with you and learn more about co-creation or where to find your book, where can people find you? Um, well, I... I I have uh, several, I have three websites. The, the last one that I'm just in the process of, you know, I just created it and, 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 and it's still not complete yet, but it's, an, it's self, uh, mastering self transformation dot com. Mm -hmm. Then there is the weevolvetv.com and then there is the her story evolves dot com. And also Facebook. You can and find it yes. on Facebook. Yes, and I'm, I'm, I'm preparing some really powerful, I'm creating some really powerful programs, workshops, and yes. women's circles, and, you know, it, it's really exciting, and it's really beautiful, it's really wonderful, because I'm, this is what I'm here to do now. I, I'm, I'm so, I should have asked you before to prepare a poem for us, to end with a poem. Oh. Do you have anything handy that you can share with us? I, I should have thought about it. Uh, let me just... Uh, do, 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 do. I don't have any poems memorized. Not memory. Can you read anything for us? Yes, I just have to find it though, uh, Corinna. <laughs> and uh, let me see if I can find it. No. Um, uh, I have, my fault for not asking ahead of time. Yeah, I, I, I have to... Can, can I send it to you and maybe you can attach it to this? I will attach it to, this, to, to the... I will attach it to the description of the interview. I will attach it. Yes. I, I, I wish I would have had, um, yeah. I would have asked you to prepare a poem for us. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. And, 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 you know, I should say that on the, her story, or one word, her story evolves. Mm -hmm. There is a page it's called uh, transformative poetry. The most of my poems, not, not, not the most actually, because I have over front no. some of my poems, a good number of my poems are there. Awesome. But I will send you one. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Like Thank you so much, Maria. It's been such a pleasure talking to you. You're, you're in truth, a powerhouse. I, I don't know how you did it. All these, these things that I know you're teaching from your own experience. I, the power of love. I will honor you for all that you've been through and how you're able to transform and transcend what life gave you. And what you made of it, it's amazing. Thank you so much for you. Thank okay. you, thank you. Love you so much. And I love you too. Thank and you. thank you, everyone who's going to be watching this video. So thank you so much. Gracias.